Today, we're gonna take a trip down memory lane. There's a lot more where these came from. <laughs> you know what these are? Ticket stubs. Let's go. They're flying everywhere. <laughs> What's going on you guys, James here, and yes, today I'm going down memory lane and we're talking about some of these old ticket stubs that I just happened to find in my closet. I was doing a little bit of organizing as we're stuck inside because of COVID-19 and I found a ton of old ticket stubs and I have been missing movie theaters for a while now. It's been a hot minute since I've been to a press screening, to a press event in any capacity, so I really cannot wait to talk about some of these movies that I've kept the ticket stubs for. I mean, I'm pulling out some here and I don't wanna get ahead of myself or spoil anything, but 10 Cloverfield Lane in 2016? And how is the ink still so perfect on that ticket? <laughs> Anyways, before we go ahead and get started, if this is your first time here at the channel, welcome to Real James. Now, if you're wondering who that is, that's this guy. And I love talking all about movies. If you do too, and you love what you hear and what you see, go ahead and hit the big red button below and subscribe to the channel. Don't forget to tap on the little notification bell. It should be right there or right here. I always get that confused. Just to stay up to date with anything new that we drop. Oh, and uh, don't forget to like this video, share it with your friends, and in the comments below, let me know which of these movies that I'm about to list off do you have a certain affinity for, or do you have a favorite ticket stub collection of your own? Because I'm excited to hear about your guys' little uh, moments of nostalgia, you know, 10 Cloverfield Lane, the Captain America Civil War, guys, this stuff is fun. A little bit of housekeeping before we get started. If you haven't seen it already, I dropped my top five horror movies of all time. And yes, I'm a huge chicken in the video. I, I get scared easily. I was getting chills talking about the movie. How is that even possible? But that's in the link in the description below. So let's get started. Like I said, found a bunch of old ticket stubs. Like they're really, really old. Some of them, I can't even read the font. So we're gonna have to go through that together. So let's get started. I'm just gonna pull random ones and we're just gonna talk about it. It's pretty much like story time all over again. So let's do it. All right, so the first ticket that I picked up actually is one we just spoke about, which is Captain America Civil War. I don't know if you could see it. Ah, it won't autofocus, unfortunately. But yes, Captain America Civil War is one film that was insanely hyped for me. I mean, I saw it May 17th, 2016. That's insane. Where did I see that? Oh, my local Cinemark. That's crazy. You know, I went with a bunch of my buddies and we absolutely love the film. If you've seen it, you understand the theater experience is just something else. And whenever you see a Marvel movie in theaters, the crowd is just, it's an event more than anything. And a lot of these movies I actually saw before I became a critic and some of them I've seen twice, you know, now that I am a critic. So it, it's really cool just to think about where I've come from if that makes sense. So the second ticket I just randomly picked up is actually 10 Cloverfield Lane which we just talked about in the intro. I'm not gonna lie to you guys, it's not that I blame people for not really loving the movie because I like it a lot but I understand why people didn't really care for it because their expectations were Cloverfield and they got a movie that was anything but except for the final five, 10 minutes of the film that tied it back to Cloverfield. I still think this movie is great. John Goodman gives an amazing performance and there's not much else to say about it other than I keep dropping these stubs on the ground and oh man, I'll pick that up later. Okay, so the next movie is Mission Impossible and um, this is in 15. So when, when was that? I'll have to check that on the back end and I'll put it up on the screen somewhere. but. This is a film that seeing on the big screen is so worth it because not only is the film shot for that, it's actually one of the more impressive, uh, technically speaking, movies that I've ever seen. The stunts, all the camera work, everything is just so fit for the big screen. And I just remember some of these actually being sold out and this was probably one of them because Tom Cruise is just a box office draw at this point, anything he does. What's the next one? What the heck, Captain America Civil War again? I guess I saw it twice. <laughs> Wow! All right, I saw the movie two times in theaters. I don't remember that actually. That's it's very interesting. All right, so the next one. Oh, okay. Okay, so you guys, I don't know if you remember it, but I dropped a video talking about my Blu-ray collection. If you haven't seen it, it'll pop up on the screen above. The funny thing is, I mentioned seeing The Hobbit. I think it was the first or second one in theaters, but in Puerto Rico. So I saw it overseas, and I just found the tickets. I forgot I even had this ticket stub. That's amazing. Caribbean Cinemas Plaza del Norte. Yeah, the font is just so, you can't see it, can you? I'll just do a close up later. Oh my gosh, insane. I didn't even know I had that ticket stub still. See, that's what's cool about this. I'm going through things I didn't even know I had. The Nice Guys, I remember exactly where I was and the frame of mind I was in when I went to go see this film because Shane Black is great. Russell Crowe and Ryan Gosling are fantastic. It's such an underrated film. If you haven't seen The Nice Guys, you really owe it to yourself to see this film. The theater we went to, I think had maybe like 10 or 
15 people in it. So not a huge box office draw, but it was definitely such a fun experience. I got to see it with a couple of my buddies. Okay, so let's see. Inside Out. Okay, so this is a very interesting film. It's a Pixar movie, and I'm not gonna lie to y'all. I didn't like it, and, and that's probably weird for me to say because a lot of people love that film, and I know a lot of people like Inside Out, but for me, I don't know. I just didn't fall in love with it. Maybe the concept was just a little bland for me. It was maybe a little too generic when it came to the story. I'll probably have to give it another watch now that I have Disney+. Plus. But yeah, Inside Out was nothing too special, although people told me I'm wrong, just like I was wrong with Logan. We won't go there yet, unless I have the tickets up here. If I do, I'm gonna, we're gonna talk about it. Okay. <laughs> okay, so this movie, San Andreas in D-Box. Man, man. I saw it with my buddy and his wife, and I'm not gonna lie to you guys, I don't think the movie is... Okay, it's really bad. I can't even try to even be serious about this. This movie is freaking terrible. Um, The Rock is great, but I think the movies are so generic. Seeing it in D-Box, if you don't know what D-Box is, is you get in the seat and you... There's like an intensity button. Turn the knob up or press the intensity button on the panel or whatever, and like the sh seats start to shake and you're like... It's like insane. I don't know. It was supposed to give this sort of feel to the film, make it better, but it made it worse. I don't know. I just didn't care for San Andreas at all. Next movie spider-man far from home okay so this is more of a recent film and funny thing about this movie is that unfortunately we missed the screening for press i believe we were out of town at that time and uh there's nothing wrong with it it just i love the film uh either that or i was just unable to make the movie i can't remember but i just know that the movie itself is just great it's in my top 10 mcu films I just really want to watch it again. Unfortunately, it's not on streaming because Sony owns the distribution rights. But Spider-Man Far From Home is definitely better than Homecoming. And that's not to say Homecoming is not a great film. It's just Spider-Man Far From Home is absolutely fantastic. Tom Holland is a great Spider-Man. Okay, next movie here. Bruh. How did I even spend money on this? So, I saw this one at a press screening with one of my buddies. And then we went to all go see it again with everyone else the following weekend, Suicide Squad, you still can't see it, can you? So I'm just gonna have to stop doing that. <laughs> but Suicide Squad is really one of those films, and I saw it in XD, how did I spend even more money for this movie? They must have sold out the other showtimes, but while the movie was a huge box office draw, I really do feel that Margot Robbie's the only good thing to come out of that. And of course, the follow-up Harley Quinn film, uh, not, of course, it didn't come out the year after, but. Birds of Prey and the Fantabulous Emancipation of One Harley Quinn is a fantastic film and unfortunately Suicide Squad was not but we're looking forward to at least I'm looking forward to James Gunn's The Suicide Squad with Idris Elba and all them good actors it's a good director good writer so we'll see what happens for a change next movie Rogue One a Star Wars story in 2016 uh, I actually saw the press screening for this one too but I guess my buddies and I wanted to go see it again and I won't lie to you guys this was the time, uh, because I saw it, of course, the second time, that I he did a, a little bit more. I, I didn't like this movie until last year. I was binging all of the Star Wars movies going through the marathon. If you haven't heard of it, I did one, a series, Star Wars Rewind. It's a great series. Um, it's kind of fun to produce and watch all the Star Wars movies leading up to The Rise of Skywalker. But here's the thing. I fell in love with Rogue One the third time, and maybe that's because my perspective shifted. It's a pretty decently written movie the only problem is you can tell it's a tale of two halves first half is one that i actually do like a lot better because it's darker more gareth edwards the second half ton of rewrites ton of reshoots it's action all the way through that's fun don't get me wrong but it just clashes tonally in that department all right moving on x-men apocalypse do we have to talk about this do, really because this movie is really bad i didn't think it was terrible when i walked out of the theater but then i went to bed and woke up the next morning and thought to myself hmm was it worth watching on a Tuesday night at 7.50 p.m.? Because that's what the ticket says. My memory's not that great. And it just, it wasn't worth it, man. You can just tell the X-Men movie started to dip in quality after this. I mean, I don't know. Just not a big fan of what the film was trying to do. It just, nothing clicked. Um, gosh, I don't want to do a whole review on it because I just don't like the movie at all. So let's move on. Star Trek Beyond, back in 2016. Man, you guys. I'm so happy and sad that I get to talk about this film a little bit because this feels like a really good Star Trek episode, right? And while I walked out of the theaters really happy, when it marinated, I even felt better about the film. I, I love the Chris Pine Star Trek films. Of course, 
Into Darkness is really just a Wrath of Khan carbon copy. But what I feel about Star Trek Beyond is something so different compared to the first two. It felt fresh, right? The approach was amazing. The problem is we're probably not getting a fourth film because they can't agree on the contracts and money seems to be an issue and it would just be so great to get another Chris Pine Star Trek film. Fortunately, I don't think we will. Imagine if Quentin Tarantino's Star Trek film comes to life. <laughs> yeah, okay. Uh, as much as I wanted to, I don't think it will happen. Okay, so the next one, I gotta turn this ticket around the right way, sorry. <laughs> Birdman, back in 2015. Wow, this ticket is, it looks so much older than it really is to be honest with you, because five years is not that old. I'm not gonna lie to you guys, the theater, I remember it distinctly being not packed. I think we were maybe two or four people in the theater. It, the movie wasn't one of those you flock out to the theaters for. <laughs> Lock. It's a bird pun. This movie's great. We talked about it in the Blu-ray collection that I went through and I, I love it. I think it's a great film. Well deserving of the Oscars that it won. I feel like I'm dropping things. I, maybe I'm not. Maybe I'm just going crazy. Oh, Avengers Age of Ultron. A movie that I've yet to rewatch after seeing it in theaters. I've only seen this movie, I think, one time and I don't like it. I don't know. It just didn't really do anything for me. Joss Whedon, this was his like final gasp of air in the MCU and then he went on to do his next superhero film which was the incredibly horribly reshot Justice League. But we won't go there. Avengers Age of Ultron is a film that I feel like I do need to give another watch because I've heard it's not as bad as people are giving it crap for but I really just don't think it fit with the rest of the MCU. There's a certain level of quality that these movies are rising to and Age of Ultron fell flat at least from what I remember. All right, next film. Star Wars episode in blank because <laughs> the ticket cut it off. <laughs> All right, so it's 2015. This had to be um, Force Awakens, right? So glad I saw it in 3D XD. Actually, was the 3D worth it? Is any 3D worth it? I mean, yeah, Avatar was probably the only movie I saw in theaters in 3D that was worth it. But even then, the movie's not that good. Man, I just sold out, seen it with a bunch of big Star Wars fans. I really do hope that they give it a rest a little bit, that Disney will give maybe five years break for big feature length Star Wars movies. I don't think that happens, but it would be such a breath of fresh air if they can go back to the drawing board, right? And just get fresh ideas, new characters, and consistency in a new trilogy, because that's the most important thing. The sequel trilogy, and maybe I'll have to do a video on that. While I love it so much, it didn't have any sort of consist consistency in tone, excuse me, because the director's chair kept spinning. So next movie, Independence Day. No, we're not talking about this terrible sequel in 2016 that I spent how much money on? Hold on, does it give me a price? Discount prepaid, probably like eight bucks or something, but awful. Walked out of the theater so mad, I was seething. Couldn't believe I spent money on that crap. Um, all right, oh, Dory, Finding Dory. Back in 2016, I actually saw this with the fam and not, not good, no, 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 no good. Not good at all. Alrighty, to another film that I saw. Um, with one of my buddies, and this is one of those experience type films, like you remember where you were when you watched it, Furious 7, and <laughs> Fast and Furious 7 is a fun freaking movie, but the problem is the follow-up, Fate of the Furious, was not that great. It was a little, like it was running out of fuel, but Furious 7 was good. Um, I really, really enjoyed it and uh, might have cried. Might have cried. Don't don't quote me on that. All right, so the next film, Straight Out of Compton. Oh man, this is a great, great movie. Um, I feel like it flew under the radar after the fact. I mean, people were talking about it for a better part of like two months, I want to say, after the movie got released. But then it kind of got lost in translation when we got into the winter season. Um, yeah, I really do feel like maybe it had a lot of box office competition around that time. It means tail end of summer, but I don't necessarily think the movie uh, got as much recognition as it deserved. What a fantastic film, great biopic, uh, just wonderful, wonderful direction, writing. They pretty much nailed all the actors for the most part. And of course it helps that Ice Cube and Dr. Dre were able to go and oversee the script and whatnot. But uh, yeah, definitely worth your time. All right, so Spider-Man. Oh man, this is probably one of the oldest subs that I have. 2012, y'all, what in the world? Wow, I had just come back from college at that time too. I believe this is uh, The Amazing Spider-Man, if I'm not mistaken, it wouldn't be two. If it, if it is two, let me know in the comments, but what a freaking fun movie. I don't know, I, I like the Andrew Garfield Spider-Mans. Um, not many people do, but um, I think it's not the fault of Andrew Garfield, it's more so the fault of the studio, kind of trying to do too much and wanting a Sinister Six film so bad, and they're not getting it. Well, they might with this new partnership, but we'll see what happens. Black Mass, Johnny Depp film, a very good um, 
theater experience wise probably like I could have waited for at home but I mean still I love going to the theaters so it was worth it Tomorrowland <laughs> oh gosh guys that's that George Clooney uh, Disneyland Disney World movie that we're not gonna talk about because it's really bad <laughs> oh it's awful Hardcore Henry a movie that gave me motion sickness and that was one of the first films I actually reviewed for what was once Reflect the Screen. I wrote an article there. You can't find it anymore because it's, uh, it's real James now. Come on. But yeah, Hardcore Henry is uh, it's a movie that had some promise, but all first person, more of a project than an actual film, if that makes sense. Hunger Games Mockingbird. Um, yeah, man, these movies made money. I saw this like Friday night, 940. How did I not fall asleep? I guess this was around the time where I was able to stay awake that late for movies. But your boy falls asleep. At when a movie goes past 9, 9.30, so come on. John Wick, oh boy, that was a bloody good time. Alien, uh, I believe this is the, uh, oh gosh, it's back in 2017, so this was the one where the, the poster is like the egg, it's like the new age alien film. Didn't really know what to feel about it, to be honest, because it felt like they were kind of just like grasping for straws from what I remember. But yeah, man, people really came out for this one. It's just a franchise that, based on its name alone, people will come out to the theater for. All right, so let's see. Fate of the Furious, we just talked about Fast and Furious 7 and how I didn't really care for Fate of the Furious. Um, yeah, that was the second time I actually saw it because I saw the screening for it and it was, it was all right. American Sniper, wow. Man, I forgot I saw this in theaters. It's, it's an okay movie. It's, it's fine, except for like the baby that was like obviously not a baby and was just like a toy at the end. Like how did Clint Eastwood think that was a good idea? I don't even know. Well, whatever, moving on. Mad Max Fury Road, man, the ink is almost dead on this one, but let me tell you guys, 2015 was such a great year, it seems, because I'm pulling so many of these ticket stubs that say 2015, and it was a fun year for movies, and yeah, Mad Max Fury Road is one of those films that, if you don't see it on the biggest screen possible, you're doing yourself a disservice, but if you only have like a 32 inch, pointing at myself, it's still a fun experience. Man, I just love that movie. I don't know what this is, like half of a stub. Batman vs. Superman, yep, I'll go ahead and throw up the discussion in the link uh, in the description if you want it. Uh, it's a fun discussion because I saw Ultimate Edition for the first time recently, but Batman vs. Superman in theaters was one of those films that was like so hype, bro. Everyone in the theater was just so ready for a great film and everyone walked out and just like was shaking their heads. I'll never forget the sight I saw. People were so upset. The Hateful Eight, this was actually a really fun experience because it was the 70 millimeter presentation, if I'm not mistaken. Either that or it was the road sh roadside show experience. So it might have just been digital, but uh, they gave you this like cool uh, pamphlet, um, not, not like a binder or anything, but it felt like you were going to an old tiny theater. And uh, there was an intermission because Lord knows the movie um, hated my bladder. That movie's long, very, very long. Oh, Kong Skull Island. This was a um, movie I saw, I believe, with my father so this was like gotta be i think this was around the time of his birthday too so that, that, that's pretty cool it's a good little memory there run all forgive me i don't know what the heck movie this is but i bought a ticket for it i guess i have zero clue that's what happens with uh, old stubs sometimes Ant-Man? Oh no, Ant-Man and the Wasp. Okay, so this was around the time where I started to get worried about Ant-Man going forward. I mean, of course, Endgame and Infinity War clearly took away all those uh, doubts in my mind, but I got a little nervous because I know they borrowed a lot of Edgar Wright's script for the first Ant-Man film. And then this film felt so lackluster and I didn't even care for most of it. I, if anything, Ant-Man and the Wasp is one of those movies where it tries to ride the coattails of the first and brings nothing new to the table. The, the humor was pretty bad, but at least the last you know, scene kind of sets up for Infinity War in a sense. Okay, or and yeah, Infinity War or Endgame, I, I can't remember, whatever. Blade Runner, oh man, this is not even a ticket stub, it's like a piece of paper. I mean, I guess it is a stub, but still. A fantastic movie. Denis Villeneuve directs one of the most captivating films and it's a sequel that is better than the first film. Rarely does a follow-up movie beat out its predecessor, but in this case, it's a great, great sequel in the category of Empire Strikes Back type of sequel. Okay, so this is a ticket stub from Dolphin Theater, which is super freaking far, but The Forest, I think that's a horror movie? Oh yeah, it is a horror movie. It's that one with um, oh, the actress from Game of Thrones, I forgot her name. Um, the movie is really bad. It's about this forest that you only go to in Japan where it, basically you're looking for a rough time terrible film. The Revenant with Leonardo DiCaprio. Yeah, seeing this on the big screen. I'm so glad I only had popcorn that night. 
I couldn't even stomach dinner afterwards. Really bad. Yeah, I tried to go home and eat, and that didn't really work out too well for me. All right, on the last stub, Deadpool and IMAX. Oh, man. Let me tell y'all. So Deadpool was like one of those films that the raunchiness and the shock value gets you, but then after that, it's just really bad. Yeah. Yeah, no, and Deadpool 2 is even worse, I think. So not a big fan of Deadpool, and that's probably weird, but I'm a huge fan of the comics, so I... I I don't know, there's like a disconnect, like I said earlier for me. But there you go, guys. Um, those are all the ticket stubs I've had saved. I know that I probably have more ticket stubs somewhere, but I can't find them. I just happened to come across a box, literally, and it had all these ticket stubs. So I am so happy that we went through memory lane together so much to make it rain. <laughs> I shouldn't have done that. Now I can't stop this recording. Alrighty, you guys. Well, there you have it. Thanks for uh, taking time to, you know, go, go down this... Uh, amazing road with me of my previous years of watching movies before I became a critic for the most part. Um, you guys are great. Again, if you haven't, go ahead and subscribe to the channel. Consider liking this video too, sharing it with your friends, and let me know in the comments again, uh, which ticket stubs you do you hold most near and dear to your heart? Because it's fun to know what you guys kind of experience at theaters too, because going to the movies isn't just going to the movies. It's an experience in and of itself. Again, I love you guys, and I'm so thankful that we're nearing 950. We're actually really close to 1,000 subscribers right now. I haven't checked the numbers recently, but boy, this is exciting. I'm really, really grateful for your guys' support, and I cannot wait to get to that next milestone with you guys. Again, thanks so much for watching, and I'll catch you at the next screening.